Hello and welcome to lesson six. In lesson five, we spoke about one mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure, zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin, and one atmosphere or 100 kilopascals of pressure. Those are standard conditions. In the IB Chemistry Data Booklet, it says that one mole of a gas under those conditions occupies 22.7 dm cube. Under standard ambient temperature and pressure, which is room temperature and pressure, 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298 Kelvin, 273 plus 25, 298 Kelvin. At 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals of pressure, one mole of a gas, occupies 24.0 dm cube. One dm cube equals to one liter. One liter equals to 1,000 cm cube. And one cm cube equals to one milliliter. So here's the issue. Suppose we had 500 milliliters of carbon dioxide in a balloon, but the temperature in our room was 38 degrees Celsius, but we were at standard pressure. How could we determine the number of moles of gas that we had? We don't have a set value like 24 or 22.7 to work with, but surely there must be a way to calculate how many moles you've got, because these two would have been arrived at in some way. So what is that secret formula? to arrive at the relationship between volume of a gas at standard pressure and a particular temperature and the number of moles. Or even if pressure is changed and it's not standard pressure, what is that relationship between volume of a gas and the number of moles? And to establish that relationship and to solve for that relationship between volume of a gas and number of moles and any pressure and any temperature, we need to use the ideal gas equation. Pressure in kilopascals multiplied by volume in dm cube equals the number of moles multiplied by this constant here, R, the gas constant, 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole. That's joules on the top and Kelvin multiplied by moles at the bottom. And that is multiplied by temperature in Kelvin. So where does this equation here come from even? It comes from a combination of three other laws that we have. First, Boyle's law, which says that if you have a gas and the volume of that gas goes up, the pressure is going to fall if the temperature is constant. In other words, there's an inverse relationship between pressure and volume at constant temperature. Another way of expressing that is to say that V is equal to some constant value multiplied by one over P. We're going to call that constant value R. So V equals to some constant value multiplied by 1, which is understood, over P. R divided by P. A 1 is understood at the top. So that is built into this expression. Then we have another law, Charles' law, which says that the volume of a gas is directly related to its temperature if you keep pressure constant. V directly proportional to T. V is equal to some constant which we're going to call R multiplied by T. So V equals again to that constant R multiplied by T. It's part of this expression. Then we've got a third relationship, Avogadro's law. And in Avogadro's law, we know that the number of moles, if that goes up, the volume of the gas goes up. So there's a direct relationship between volume and the number of moles. V, the volume, 
is equal to some constant, which we're going to call R, multiplied by N, the number of moles. V is equal to R multiplied by N. So with all of those three fitting in to give you this, then we move the P from the denominator over to here by multiplying both sides of the equation by P. And that's going to give us P multiplied by V, PV equals nRT. That's called the ideal gas equation. Ideal because it doesn't apply to every gas under all conditions, but most of the real gases that we have follow this law and it could be applied with a high degree of accuracy. It only breaks down slightly when the temperature is very low or if the pressure is very high. This law is very good for determining how the air in an airbag would behave under different conditions, whether cold or hot, for example, because we won't be using an airbag at low temperatures, like this one that's going to make the relationship break down. We won't be using the airbag at pressures that are high enough to break down the ideal gas equation. So therefore, this equation is very reliable for all of the calculations that we have to do in chemistry. But let's go in and take a closer look at how to manipulate these units in an actual... Let's return to that question with 500 milliliters of carbon dioxide in a balloon at 38 degrees Celsius. And here we've already converted the 500 milliliters into 500.0 cm cubed because one milliliter equals to one cm cube. The temperature 38 degrees Celsius. With that kind of temperature it's not possible to have a predetermined value for the number of moles. We need to calculate it using the ideal gas equation. PV equals nRT. But as we go about using this ideal gas equation I want to point out a number of important details for you. And first of all 38 degrees Celsius must be converted into Kelvin. That is done by adding 273 to 38. That comes to 311 Kelvin. Then we convert 500 milliliters or 500 cm cube into dm cube by dividing by 1000 because 1000 cubic centimeters or cm cube equals to 1 dm cube and of course 1 dm cube also equals to 1 liter. Doing that conversion we get 0 0.500 dm cube and pressure is 100 kilopascals. Standard pressure might be given as slightly over 100 in other sources but in the IB data booklet it's given as 100 kilopascals. R the gas constant 8.314 joules per kelvin mole that could be simplified and written like this 8.314 joules divided by kelvin multiplied by moles i've presented this in this way so that i can use it to demonstrate how the units would cancel now we want to solve for n we've got a value for r for t for p and of course for v so let's rearrange things and make n the subject of the formula. Then we would be solving for PV over RT or PV divided by RT. And that would be 100 kilopascals, P, multiplied by V, 0 0.500 dm cube, multiplied by the reciprocal of RT, which means 1 over 8.314 joules, and then with the joules becoming the denominator, the Kelvin and the mole would have to go into the numerator because we are finding the reciprocal. And then one would be divided by 311 Kelvin. With all of this laid out, Kelvin here would cancel with Kelvin here. But what about joules and kPa, kilopascals and dm cube? None of that would be able to readily cancel and that is where we need to be aware that one joule is equal to kilopascal dot dm cube. Kilopascals multiplied by dm cube. 
That is what JULES stands for. So breaking the Joule apart into what it actually represents, we will see that kilopascals would cancel with kilopascals. TM cubed cancels with DM cubed. Kelvin with Kelvin, leaving the only unit standing as the mole doing the mathematics. We come down to this answer and I've reduced my answer to two significant figures. This zero here that's right after the decimal, not a significant figure. I've reduced my answer to two significant figures because if you go back to the question you'll see that this data point, 38 degrees Celsius, was given as exactly two significant figures, just two digits here. The 500.0 was given as four significant figures but the answer that you give at the end of these questions must be limited by going back to the data and looking at all of your data entries and taking the one that has the least number of significant figures and letting your answer be limited by that. Final answer to this question, 0 0.019 moles.